Um, <laughs> if I look really hot and sticky, that's because I am really hot and sticky. It's the 30th of June that, uh, I don't know if it's like what it was like where you are, but God, up here it's absolutely sweltering. It's supposed to be even hotter tomorrow. I thought I'd do um, a quick sort of look round my leather working area and show you the sort of stuff that I use. Could be useful for, for somebody to um, uh, see the sort of tools that you need and the kind of the, the, the sort of layout that I use. Okay, so I'll uh, just turn this off and show you around. So I've got this main. Uh, desk here, this main working area. Uh, I'll take you in. So this is a variety, a selection of some of the knives that I use. It's not all of them, but uh, you've got uh, a sort of uh, like a half round. Uh, I've forgotten the proper name of that. And one of these. That's not an Alpha, but it's very similar. Uh, I quite like those, but. I need a new blade on that. We use this probably more than anything. Cheap as chips this was. But uh, because you can snap the blades off, you can very easily get a lovely fresh new blade. That's very nice uh, for cutting curves. You know, sort of inside curves are quite tricky sometimes, but that, that's really good. That's that's useful for sort of cutting off square ends. It can also be used for skiving. That is an alpha. And just a, a general sort of... Stanley knife that uh, that's that's pretty useful too. Um, got a hole punch there. Could do with a better one than that, to be honest. But it's still going okay. Some micrometer things uh, for measuring. I use those for the knives as well. Okay. Um, so got a variety of stamping tools here. That I use for tooling the leather, and that might look a large collection, but you know, compared to some of the guys who who do their their leather frequently, that that's a fraction of a collection. But uh, it's more than enough for what I do. Could probably do with a few extra bits and bobs. There's my custom-made ones at the back there with with the logo. Um, got them from two different places. I think that was from La Prevo. And that was from a guy on, uh, well, he's on eBay amongst other places. Um, really nicely made. We'll uh, catch that. Focus on these. Oh, there we go. Focus on these. He's grim. That's quite nice. Funny enough, though, I don't know why, but I find that these Leprevo ones are every bit as good. And um, make, make, just as crisper print, they work out a lot cheaper. Um, some pricking irons in <laughs> various states of disarray. I don't know if it's just me, but I keep snapping prongs off them. Don't have much luck with the uh, with some makes. Good uh, Japan ones don't seem to agree with me. I seem to have had no luck there. These are called dappers. Kind of borrowed from jewellery making and I get some of the sort of effects on my sheaths using a variety of those. Uh, some more pricking irons for the fine stuff, much finer ones. Um, some half sort of round ones for finishing off straps. Uh, Modelling sp spoon things, I use those for uh, doing some of the carving. Um, that's like a, a fancy burnisher which you can put on a pillar drill. It's made out of coca bolo. quite like using that by hand, to be honest, though, rather than in the drill. And there's a more traditional tandy one. Works, works pretty well, too. My swivel knife that I do the carving with. One thing I would recommend if you want to have a go at this is get hold of a ceramic blade. And if you can... Um, yeah, if you can get one of those, they're much better than a steel blade. And keep it buffed. Um, strop it regularly. And it goes, it's really, really easy to get cut leather with that, as opposed to a steel one. Um, for edging die, don't use that much, don't like it. Variety of edges. Um, 
hole punches, skivers, things for sort of putting um, edging on. That's that's just a, an old screwdriver that I sharpened up on the end for doing um, sort of punching through leather when you want to put uh, I've forgotten the name of them now, those round things. I'll show you one in a minute. I've got some mallets and moles. That's the one I started with, that hide mallet. I guess probably had more use than anything else. Some of the rulers that I use are up there. A variety of different sized daubers. Um, spray bottle, which I sometimes use when I'm tooling. If the leather's drying out really quickly, like on a night like tonight, it would do. And then this mess. I've got all sorts of dyes, oil dyes, uh, water dyes at the back that you can't see. I've got canuba cream. I've got resolene and tan coat back there. I don't tend to use those so much now. I use the wax finishes and things more, but they're there. A million and one different glues. Sort of toolbox full of gubbins. All my fixtures and fittings, well some of the fixtures and fittings are in there, there's more up there. Could do with something a lot better and neater than this. Uh, that's a sort of press for fitting things like press studs. Um, and different edging dies. At the back there I've got my Proxon which is a lovely little bit of kit. You know, like a Dremel alternative, loads of different brushes. Uh, an acrylic gloss lacquer that I used on one knife to finish off as a, a rather than oil. More edging dye. My leathers are tucked away in a wardrobe here. There's about three of these boxes as they go. Whoops, you can't see that. Any three of these boxes going back. Don't get all my leather from Tandy by any means, but uh, the boxes I keep because it's useful for storing the leather in. And a bag full of bits and bobs. More stuff, but a lot of that's to do with knife making. Um, I've got uh, liners and tubes, all sorts. This good quality tracing paper, which I sort of trace out some of the designs on that I'm going to do on leather or, or for the knife making as well. And boxes full of all sorts of things, all sorts of stuff for knife making. Bits of um, liner, more liner material, all sorts of other handle materials. I've got boxes and boxes of wood that I've stabilised down there. Some on the windowsill are all over the place. As you can see I'm not terribly neat and tidy, but uh, but I know where stuff is. I really need to have a good sort. A lot of this will be going down to the knife making workshop when it's done, so it'll be a lot more open and clean, a bit more elbow room. Something else I had a go at. That's uh, marquetry. That takes a while. And uh, just to remind me, if I'm getting big headed, I think I'm getting quite good at leather work. That's from somebody who's really good at leather work, a uh, guy called Ginger Guest. I just look at that and that keeps you humble. <laughs> okay, so that was. Uh, was the workshop. Um, that was what I was talking about, that fitting there and you can see that sort of cut there in the leather so that that sort of sharpened blade cuts that quite nicely and the hole punch does that. Just just to be clear this piece of leather work isn't mine this is done by um, Mark and Helen. Helen. I don't know which one of them made this one or if it's a joint effort from uh, uh, shark designs. Uh, well, I think that might be their old name. I don't know. No, it's still got the shark logo on, hasn't it? So, looking forward to using it. I should have had that out today in the sun. What an idiot. I forgot to try that. I must try that tomorrow in the sun. Right. Well, well I don't know if that was any of, of any interest to you, but I do know that when I've um, seen other people's workshops I've found it interesting just to see how they've got stuff laid out what they've got what tools they use uh, so 
maybe maybe you found that of some some interest you know um leave comments you know if there's anything you want to see uh, i have had a few people asking me to do tutorials on my leather work which i will get round to doing at some point makes you a bit nervous when there's there's people out there doing such brilliant tutorials that have been at it a lot longer so and i haven't got anything um to hold the phone yet um i've used i use my phone for filming as opposed to a camcorder i haven't got a sort of clamp but i'll i'll sort something out for that and uh, take you through perhaps one of my my sheaths the sort of processes and stages that i go through to make a sheath okay uh, see you next time guys thank you bye